Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing great. I hope you had an amazing, relaxing ho summer holidays and now you're all excited and fresh to be back to the new academic term. So let me begin. I am Justin D'Souza, your math teacher. This is my channel, Best Math. Before I start, I just want to thank you all for, you know, subscribing, for liking my videos and especially for all the positive comments and the feedback I received, especially during your last term exams. I'm, uh, you know, that really motivates me to do more. Thank you one and all and I really appreciate it. And uh, these will be a set of uh, a series of videos of all the lessons which are there for your term one exam. And at the end of the term, I will also do the videos for the exam uh, topics. For now, we will start with the lesson one in the chapter two, which is uh, the chapter on limits and continuity. Lesson one is tangent lines and length of a curve. You might find this uh, lesson a bit unique, but as we go on with more and more lessons and more and more problems, you will get a hang of it. And also, I won't go in lots of details. I will try to stick to the point and mainly I will solve problems, example problems and explain you how to solve the problems um, based on the textbook. OK, so now then we will start with the lesson objectives. It is to estimate the slope of a uh, slope for a given function at a given point using tables and estimate an arc length for a given function. And the keywords are slope of a curve, slope of secant, arc length. We have uh, studied about slope, arc length, everything in different ways in the previous terms. Now we will learn in a different point of view. So here we are with the slope of a curve. So let me just show you these figures over here. What's happening? You can see the first figure and the second figure. There's a curve, right? And then there's a second line, a line. So you can see the curve is almost the same because they are at the same points. This is at 1, 1, and this x of 1, the y value is 2. And at x, uh, x of 2, y value is 5. At both the points, it's almost the same. So it's basically the same curve, okay, in both the cases. But you can see the slope varies. How do we find a slope? We need two points to find slope, isn't it? We need x and y point, x1, y1, x2, y2. Otherwise, we cannot find the slope. So now if I tell you find the slope at this particular point, we, we cannot, you know, we need two points. I can find the slope at this and this. Okay, over here the slope is between 1 and 2. So let me uh, write the slope formula. It is dy by dx that is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And you know over here x1 is 1. And what is the y1? What is the y value? It is 2. Same thing over here, x2, y2. What is the y2 value? It's it's around 5 over here. It's 5. So you can see, you should just plug in the values. 5 minus y2 is 2. 5 minus 2, that is the vertical. And the horizontal is x2, 2 minus 1. Same thing over here you can do. So 0, this is x1, x2. This is y2 and this is y1, y1, y2. So y2 is 2 minus 1, x2 is 1 minus 0. That's it. Substitute, you will get the answer. So now we found the slope. But now what if I tell you I need a slope at a point 1, at this particular point? How do I find the slope? I just want at that point. I can do one thing. I can go very, very close. Look, when I zoom this curve so close enough, if I've zoomed it, see, this is very, very close. You will realize that a curve is also at one particular point. It's like a secant, like a straight line, isn't it? So if I want at one, take a point which is very, very close at one, say 0.99 or take 1.01 .01. then you will just find that particular curve to be straight line and then you can find the slope isn't it so that is what we are doing by the method of tables let's see this 
you have the, the, these graphs won't be given just for your understanding uh, just now whatever we saw it is this particular function find estimate the slope for y equals x square plus 1 at x is equal to 1 look x square is parabola and plus 1 means so we will have the vertex at 1 okay and uh, at y equals 1 this plus 1 means it moves upwards at x is equal to 1 so if this is 1 somewhere over here i need to know what's the slope see at this particular point now when we take a point very far ahead or very back ahead back side we are getting two different values right we just now saw it we will come to this in a while this is all for understanding i'll directly stick to how to solve the problem so now imagine i take x uh, uh, see whenever you have x is equal to one take a point more than and less than if it is one take zero and two which is more than and less than when x is 2 what is the y value now you can see from the graph and tell but what if the graphs are not given just substitute over here instead of x is 2 right instead of x substitute 2 2 squared plus 1 4 plus 1 equals 5 same way x is equal to when x is equal to 0 substitute 0 squared plus 1 that is equal to 1 so this is how we get it okay we found two points but we need x1 y1 x2 y2 so which are the two points this one over here not with these two i need one more right? let's consider this one only okay so when x is equal to one what is y value y squared will be two about one squared plus one is two so let me consider these given points as x1 and this one as y1 this as x2 y2 and then we can find the slope isn't it y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 we just did it a while ago same thing now over here second point as well we did it now we are getting two different slopes but this is not it let us go closer to one we had started with two and zero right see one is over here zero and this is two two point uh, sorry 1.5 is very close to one than two same way 1.1 is closer same way over here 0.9 is closer or 0.99 or 1.01 let us go very very close to one so we are going close to one from two close to one is 1.1 and over here at 0.9 and same way over here we will go 1.01 and 0.99 so now you can see we are getting very close to one and now let us use these points and solve the slope what is the answer over here both the answers are almost correlating it is telling us it is almost equal to two you can see this see it is very very close to two isn't it 2.01 and 1.99 both the sides so this is how we solve by tables we have to take two values very close to uh, the given x value and then solve see now it, it is easy okay we can directly substitute and find but eventually you'll come to know when you substitute x value you'll get undefined answer then the limits come okay there now it's just slope so we don't have to worry about it we will see in the next lessons but one more thing um, why can't we take the same value two times like you know same point um, because this was a question asked by a student but anyways let, let me just address this if you're thinking I know x1 x is this much 1 and y is equal to 2 so why can't my, I take x1 and x2 the same value and try because you can do that like just substitute it'll be 2 minus 2 divided by 1 minus 1 the answer will be 0 by 0 it's undefined okay so you can't take the same value you have to take a value which is close to it okay so that is why we are taking these values making a table so if we are not taking one we are very very narrowing down we are zeroing in towards x equals 1 but we are not taking x is equal to 1 over here it can't be same it must be different same thing over here 0 0.99 but not 1 I hope this is clear and now the slope is 2 right look over here at this particular point you can see 
it is like two see if it was like this it is one slope is one this is two it's two okay the uh, from the graph we can observe it but over here there is confirmation that it is two so that is the thing now let's see one more problem where we have sine value sine x so sine x at x is equal to zero same thing but now let's see uh, this is the graph we are understanding without graph we can do it just that we need a calculator and we need to just solve it right so you don't need a graph exactly for this but graph just for your understanding let's uh, zoom in and see over here as you know sine graph starts from zero and it goes on at half pi or pi by two it maxes and then it comes down at pi and three pi by two it will be the lowest point and then at two pi it will come back so this is a cycle same thing goes to the left side these are the basic things of the sine graph now we are just focusing at the point x of zero let's see how is the graph if you look closely the graph is the graph is basically a 45 degree line now we will see how exactly we can solve without the graph over here you need to start taking a value which is close to zero that's it and substitute start solving so let's start with say one instead of x is zero let's take it as one because negative numbers it's a little complicated so let's take x as one only once you take it as one what will be sine it'll be sine instead of x one you know sine one so you have uh, x is equal to zero sine zero right this is the y value so x1 y1 now x2 let's take it as one y2 will be sine one and the same thing you can do the slope y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 let me use the calculator over here and let me just type it out over here y2 is sine one minus sine zero that is y2 minus y1 x2 is 1 minus 0 it's the same thing like what we did just a while ago now if i press equal to i'll get a wrong answer just try to pause the video and think why write it in the comments and explain it to your friends why exactly if you you know know the answer if i press equal to i'm getting a wrong answer I hope you understand this. See, it's in degrees, whereas whenever it is in trigonometric function, we have to use radians. So we have to press shift mode and then four, option number four. Now this calculator is set into radian mode. See, now when I press equal to, I'm getting the correct answer. So always remember when you have sine, cos, tan, any trigonometric function, use radians. So this is your answer. And then what else okay this is over here same thing you need to start going closer and closer instead of sine 1 I will start 0 0.1 and over here it's the same thing 0 0.1 and now I'm getting closer to 0 0.9983 and as I go closer to 1 you can see I am getting 0 point uh, 0 point 999 and so on sorry i told at the beginning uh, minus is not required sorry you really require two points okay i don't know what i was thinking when i told that you need two points you you have to take what i told in the last video the last uh, section last problem whenever you have say zero take one and less than one that is minus one so now the same thing over here you need to do it for minus values see but the answer will be same so you're taking minus one x as minus one substitute then find the slope same procedure and you're going to get the answer now what is happening over here the slope at x is equal to zero is corresponding to one one means it's 45 degree line a straight line and yes you can see it from the graph it is corresponding towards one so this is the correct answer it must match on both the sides this side and both the sides that is negative one and one when you go closer that is um negative 0 0.01 and 0 0.01 must be very very close to the same answer yes they are very close so the answer is one over here the slope that's it
So if you're thinking, what should I write in the final answer? This is it. You know, the slope is one. That will be the only thing which, which is required to solve for your understanding. And then now we will go to arc length of a curve. See, all these problems, once you go to the next chapter where we learn differentiation, you have a simple formula which will give you the exact length. Um, so just learn for the understanding part, you know, because eventually when you learn the next lesson and you get this question, you're going to use the simple method. You know, you're not going to use this like the table, like all this long method. No, no way, because you will learn it in an easy, easy method in the uh, coming lessons. But now we are just seeing how, uh, you know, you can solve it otherwise as well. Once you learn differentiation, it gets all easy, you know. But now what is this exactly? You can see there's a curve, right? I want to find the length. You know, the length formula is over here given as d equals x2 minus x1 the whole square plus y2 minus y1 the whole square. We have used this many times before. That's the distance, distance between two points. Now, if I have a line like this, if I have to find the length, I just find the distance between these two points. But now if I have a curve, what can I do? I just can't find the distance between these two. It's not the same, right? It's not the length exactly. Like, What should I do? So if I find the distance, will I get the exact length? No, because it's curved. The length is different. But you will get an answer which is not so accurate. See, the distance between these two points is 4.24. So that's not an accurate length. Now, what about I will take some point over here in the middle. So I'll make another section. So I have one section and then one more section. So now I will have to use the distance formula two times. I have to find the distance between this and this and then this and this and add them up. So you can see over here the distance between 0, 1, 3, 4. Just use this x1, y1 x2 y2 so distance is x2 minus x1 so 3 minus 0 the whole square plus 4 minus 1 the whole square it's mentioned over here the same thing and over here same thing but 0 1 and then we have one more point what is this point what is the x value of this 1.5 what is the y value it is corresponding to 0 0.25 okay so generally the equation will be given so you can plug in the x value and find the exact equation y value so that's the thing and then you solve now you got the answer 5.7 which is more accurate but what if i make two more points in the middle from this to this this to this and this to this now here you can see 5.99 and as I make more section, this, this is not it. I'll make one line, another line, another line, another line, and so many lines. I am getting more and more accurate answers. 6.09 is more accurate because there are seven segments. So you might think, when do I get the most accurate answer? The most accurate answer you will get is if you have infinite segments. Think about it. So infinite segments, how do you do infinite segments? We'll come to learn uh, soon, you know, in the coming lessons in the next chapters. So as you make more and more line segments, you will get a more accurate answers. You don't need to go to infinite. You can just see over here only. You can see this is about the uh, more accurate answer. So if they ask you, say, for example, this problem, estimate the arc length of the curve y equals sine x for z, uh, x, is, is, x is greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to pi. So it's, it's sine. We saw the sine graph, right? It starts from 0, 0, and it goes like this. At pi, it comes down and reaches the y value of 0 itself. At 0, it is 0. You can try this. Sine 0 equals 0 sine pi equals zero in the calculator if you do you will get it let's just do it anyways so sine zero is zero sine pi is zero because we know that from the graph so we have to take this whole thing and now this much this much uh, length of this curve how do we find the length we know the distance formula okay but how do we find the exact thing see we will take a point in the middle at pi by 2 we are taking a section 
Now we will find the distance between these two lines and these two lines. How do we solve it? Here it is 0, 0. Here it is pi by 2, x is pi by 2, y is 1. At pi by 2 it's maximum. And here it is pi, 0, y is 0. So the first section, the distance between, uh, it'll be pi by 2 minus 0 the whole square plus 1 minus 0 the whole square. The whole thing is square root, okay? And the second section will be pi minus pi by 2 the whole square plus 0 minus 1 the whole square square root. Now when you simplify, you'll get pi by 2 whole square. 1 square is 1. Same thing, pi minus pi by 2 is pi by 2. That is half pi itself. And minus 1 the whole square, it will become positive. Or you can directly put this in calculated. You will get the answer. You can try this. You will get the answer. And this is the answer. But this is not accurate, right? How about we take more points? Over here, there are more points taken. A, a pi by 4. X is equal to pi by 4. What is the Y value? Take out your calculator. Use X is equal to pi by 4. Y value is root 2 by 2. You can see over here, root 2 by 2 is used. Say uh, pi by 4. Okay. 1 by root 2 is the same as, say, over here you're getting root 2 by 2. That is equal to 1 by root 2. Why? Because 1 by root 2 means multiply both the sides by root 2 and root 2. You're going to get root 2 in the numerator. Root 2 times root 2. It's 2 power half multiplied by 2 power half. It's just to the power 1. So this is the answer. So, okay. I just... Yes, yeah, so basically, yeah, th this is the same thing. I only got confused why I did this. So over here, 1 root 2 is equal to root 2 by 2. That's what I'm trying to say. 1 by root 2. When you multiply both the sides by root 2, you're going to get this. So in calculator, generally, this won't be mentioned. This will be mentioned. It's the same thing. Whatever we just did, you can apply it. But it's just going to be a long method because there's one section, two, three, four times you're going to use it. See, this is the formula. You have to use it so many times and then you'll get a more accurate answer. You're getting 3.72 in the first case. Over here, 3.79. Use all these terms in the distance formula, you'll get it. Increase the amount of segments as you increase, see over here, eight line segments were used and in calculator you got 3.81 and so on. So as you increase, see, this is the more accurate answer. So as you increase the number of line segments, you will get more and more accurate answer, but they will mention to you in the question how many line segments you want. And this eventually will be solved in different ways in a simple formula in the coming lessons as well. But for now, this lesson is just an introduction to all the slopes or estimating arc lengths and everything. I hope you have grasped the basic and please stay tuned for the coming videos, coming lessons, because these are all in continuity. So you should not miss any. So go in continuity. After this lesson, go to the next lesson. Don't jump any lessons. So stay tuned. Please be thorough and try to solve more and more problems. Please go to your, uh, use your textbook. There are so many exercise problems. Try solving them. In, if you grasp all these example problems, then you can definitely solve more and more problems. And you need to solve more and more problems. So this is it. Take care and please do stay tuned for the next video. Bye-bye for now.